Hi everybody, Reveal Rob here coming at you on a holiday. Man, I feel like I'm echoing. Let me take this thing off. But man, I am so freaking excited to talk to all of you about the big DC news that dropped today. That's right. Finally, after all this time, we've been waiting for James Gunn to give us the goods, man. Give us that, give us that DC slate. Some of the DC slate, not all of it. We've been waiting for it. And it is finally here, man. We got, finally got some information all day. Been waiting and anticipating this. Video came out, got the goosies, got the goosebumps. So excited, man. It's like a holiday for me as a DC fan. So I wrote down some stuff that happened today. I can talk about all that with you here today. I'm also recording this as an audio. So let's see how this goes. First ever video. I am awkward on videos. Um, check out the shirt, though. Stay Metal, Tombstone Josh's show. Fantastic shirts on Public. Also, do me a favor. Hit that like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and share my awkwardness with everybody because that is who I am. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and dive into this big time news that dropped today. And I'm going to take some uh, swigs of water in a Mountain Dew bottle because I'm fancy. Going to talk about this whole thing here. Uh, first off, it is called Chapter 1 of the DCU. It will be called Gods and Monsters. Sounds so cool and metal. Uh, kicking off DC Studios, Peter Safran and James Gunn gave us the info recently, uh, today, of course, about uh, what we can look forward to with some of the DCU going forward. And the first quote we got here is that DC Studios is unprecedented says Peter Safran. It is a standalone production entity and studio. It is the first time ever that everything DC-related film, television, live action, animation, gaming is all centralized under one vision, one creative vision that is only James and Peter Safran. Man, it's all under there. So that's a big thing. It's a big difference because the DC movies have kind of gone out to everywhere and all over the place. Now there's one collective unit behind everything it's peter safran james gunn they're behind all of it you got to go through them they are dc studios and it's a good move man i like that idea we're gonna have that creative team just there working on everything it's the way it needs to be we need to have this one force controlling that not you know everything else going on in the studio man we need that one creative force man so it's good to see that happening there as well uh, to build the overarching story for the DCU, uh, Gunn has brought in a writer's room of uh, Drew Goddard, who was behind The Martian, Jeremy Slater, who did Moon Knight, uh, Christina Hobson, who did The Flash film that is coming up, as well as Batgirl. Uh, let's see, Crystal Henry, who is behind Watchmen and comics writer Tom King, who has done Batman and Mr. Miracle, uh, saying, quote, we sat down in a room for a few days and we started to bash out what the basic overall plan could be. Not so much that it ties your wrist, but enough that we know what the basic story is, where we're going, and it's something that we will continue to do. Which, again, good thing, man. I'm glad they're getting together and putting together the vision that they want to put together and move forward with. Now, it's a good thing that they're not, you know, tying wrist, as you put it there, or anything like that. You want to, want to have all creative juices flowing, be one creative collective unit as you go forward. So I love what they're doing there. Uh, the plan... Uh, was roughly the plan that they're putting together, uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran, is to have roughly two films and two TV series per year in the DCU, which is perfect as far as I'm concerned. That makes sense. You don't want to over, you know, over supply, I guess, with too much stuff uh, every year. You want to build it out and let it all go forward. So that's a good idea right there. The output, however, will not sacrifice quality to meet deadlines. Uh, Gunn and Safran were adamant that the films and series will not go into production until scripts are finished, which is a fantastic idea man i'm so glad they're doing that because you don't want to rush these things and not to you know take a shot of marvel or anything here but you know obviously they've announced that uh, blade movie and since then it has gone through so many you know writers and directors issues and all that stuff i think this is good right here where you don't announce the film or anything like that you don't go into production until the scripts are finished and ready to go so that's a good move right there um also just got out of the shower so if i'm dripping it is wetness from the shower <laughs> um let's see all in all, the slate will run through 2027, and uh, the only things we really have release dates for right now are Superman Legacy and The Batman Part 2. Uh, it's officially called The Batman Part 2. So that is something to talk about right there when it comes to the Batman films as well as the Joker film coming up from Todd Phillips. Those will be part of what is known as the DC's Elseworld. So they're going to be stories that exist outside of the DCU. So the continuity of the DCU universe and storyline will all be over there in the DCU. Films like The Batman from Matt Reeves and uh, obviously a sequel um, and whatever else they end up doing over there will exist out there as well as Todd Phillips' Joker film and Joker Part 2. 
Uh, those will all exist outside of what the DCU is called. Anytime that comes up and there's going to be more opportunities of this happening and we're going to see this happen more, it is going to be called DC Else Worlds, which, again, cool, fantastic idea. I like that. It's Again, it takes the weight off of everything in the world has to be connected. Everything DC has to be shoved in to this, you know, messed up place, you know? Um, no. Cool. We're going to have this one world. We're going to have this other world. We're going to just be... We're creating, man. This is what it sounds like over there at the DC Studios. So, it's so fun to say DC Studios, too. Now, they have officially a studios to do over there. They didn't have that before. Now, they got the studios. Pretty cool. Which, you know, they did go into here saying that the history of DC is pretty, cuss word, fucked up. <laughs> um, quote, there were just giving away IP like there were party favors to any cre uh, creators. What we are going to do is we're going to promise that everything from our first project forward is going to be unified, but we will say that we've gotten very lucky inheriting these next four projects. Now, the next four projects, speaking of there, is, of course, the Shazam Fury of the Gods film that will be here soon, the Flash film that will be here this year, the Blue Beetle movie uh, that was pulled up from HBO Max 2 theater release, and, of course, the Aquaman sequel uh, that will be in the end of the year, which not gonna see it because you know who's in it but to each their own <laughs> um they were viewed by a lot of people as not important the films will not be worth anything this year that's just a wash to a lot of people on the internet because of this new direction that dc uh, studios is going in but gun has dispelled that notion um and you know made it known that the flash film is i mean here's a quote i will say here that flash is probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made and that's been consistent with all reports and tests that the flash film is one of the greatest superhero comic book movies to ever exist and i can't wait to see it as a flash fan i am really excited about that uh the paris said uh, shazam sets up the andy machete directed flash film which resets everything so now we know officially that, that flash film will be resetting everything it's been a hot rumor for a while that the, uh, the film will either soft reboot or will change everything altogether. we now know according to the team there uh, that the Flash film will, in fact, reboot all of it. It will, you know, take it over. <laughs> you know, we're starting over. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. They declined, of course, to tell us exactly what will happen, which is fine. We don't need to know. We can watch the movie. Uh, the Flash film will then surge into Blue Beetle, which will flow into Aquaman 2, which will then lead us into the new Superman movie that has already been announced before. Today, we got some more information on the Superman film I'll be sharing with you here in a moment. Uh, quote, these four movies are terrific. There's no reason why any of the characters and the actors playing those characters are not part of the DCU. There's nothing that prohibits that from happening. Now, of course, that leads into a lot of people talking about Ezra Miller and The Flash. Uh, if you followed me, I, I'm a fan of Ezra Miller. I don't have much of a, you know issue with Ezra playing The Flash going forward. Now, Ezra has made some drunken, stupid mistakes, uh, without a doubt. I will say some trigger words here in a moment um, that I hopefully doesn't, you know, harm anybody by hearing me say them. But uh, the allegations against Ezra Miller, such as the grooming allegation, that is, of course, gone absolutely nowhere because that was, you know, <laughs> I mean, the person who was allegedly being groomed has come out and said it was uh, made up by their parents. Essentially, parents were just trying to attack um, and then the other allegation about the kids and a woman being held at his ranch, or their ranch, excuse me, uh, has also gone absolutely nowhere because that was an allegation made up by a jealous ex. Um, as you notice, again, both of those things have gone absolutely nowhere. The only thing that has happened with Ezra is that Ezra's made some drunk, drunken, stupid mistakes at a bar. Um, they have, uh, the, just recently, uh, within the last month or so, uh, got a plea deal. They have... They're on probation, they're seeking mental health treatment, and paying a fine and all that stuff before the drunken stupidity of breaking into someone's house, and we've all seen drunken idiots and all that stuff. I think Ezra, you know, we have to wait and see what happens with Ezra, and we're going to get that in a moment, but I, again, <laughs> you know, the baseless allegations that have gone absolutely nowhere, let's forget about those, let's focus on the fact that Ezra is paying for the drunken mistakes they made. And they are seeking mental health treatment, which is the absolute most important thing here is that mental health is the thing that's being taken care of. Because as someone who deals with mental health myself, I know the effects of it and it's very important to take care of it because it can get very bad. So the good thing is Ezra, they are seeking help for that. 
Um, and we got a quote here about Ezra. Um, the newly installed DC co-head Peter Safran said the door is open for further collaborations with uh, Miller after the Flash standalone opens later this uh, year, June 16th, saying, quote, Ezra is completely committed to their recovery, and we are fully supportive of that journey that they're on right now. I laugh because the water dripping down my forehead. <laughs> um, when the time is right, when they feel like they're ready to have the discussion, we'll all figure out what the best path forward is. But right now, they are completely focused on their recovery, and in our conversations with them over the last couple months, it feels like they're making enormous progress which again that is the most important thing right there is the progress being made for the mental health so we'll see what happens with Ezra going forward as a flash but as of right now it seems that the main focus is the mental health aspect and that is of course what the main focus should be there uh the flash film again coming later this year and is apparently extremely good uh let's see going <laughs> just stay in the controversy realm Zachary Levi recently retweeted something about uh Pfizer, not anti-vax whatsoever. Again, look into these things before you start attacking and all that stuff. Zachary Levi was not talking about the vaccine whatsoever. He's talking more about the bad things that company has done in the past. All right, now let's jump into the future with the DC things that we heard broken down today in the DC slate, starting with, of course, the movies. I'm a movie guy, right? So we're going to kick it off with the big one, Superman Legacy, which again, met with a lot of hesitancy from a lot of people who were upset that Henry Cavill will not be Continuing the role of Superman, especially after Black Adam, I will to let you know the Black Adam Superman thing. It was cool. It was awesome. It was an awesome moment. I got the goosies while, while seeing it in theaters and all that. But Henry Cavill has never signed on to play the character any longer. He was not under contract any longer. That was talked about today as well. And again, they're moving and starting a new universe. And they're going with like younger actors, it seems. So, you know, I'm sure they'll have something for Henry in the future. We'll see what happens. That's been left wide open. Um... But as far as Superman goes, they're moving in a new direction, and that direction will be Superman Legacy. Excuse me while I get some water. Yeah, I don't talk that much. <laughs> the film is set to open July 11th, 2025. It is called Superman Legacy and will mark the start of the DCU, um, as Saffron put it. But it will not be an origin story of the man still. Quote, it focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. Uh, he is kindness in a world that thinks of kindness as old-fashioned. Um, it's the writing. Gunn is writing the project. Saffron says he hopes that Gunn can uh, be persuaded, perhaps, to direct it as well. Gunn uh, was on, uh, had a poker face while he was saying that. Uh, this, of course, was a big deal rebooting Superman. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav made it uh, no secret that rebooting Superman was top priority for the company. Uh, Gunn said Superman is for everyone. That is a four-quadrant film that should speak to everyone in the world. Yeah, <laughs> make sure I said that. Uh, as for the separate Superman movie produced by J.J. Abrams uh, through Bad Robot, that is apparently still in development and would exist outside of the DCU. So again, it's a world thing. Uh, moving from there, we go to the authority, not the WWE authority, uh, DC authority, and pretty much we don't know much about that. I, I'll be right there as well. I don't know much about the authority myself, but uh, it is an ensemble movie about superhumans who have a less than idealistic approach to saving the world. Uh, Gunn spoke at length about the authority, the project he said he's really excited to bring to life, and the characters uh, were created from Wildstorm that launched in 1992. Uh, independent entity under current DC Comics chief Jim Lee. Uh, it was rebooted in the New 52. Uh, Gunn said he and Saffron intend to do the same with Wildstorm characters in the DCU, which is a good thing. They're bringing in these fresh characters. I remember seeing a lot of that as well. I was like, why are they always going to do Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman, man? Why can't we get new people and new characters? There you go. New people, new characters right there with the authority. Uh, quote, it's... It isn't just a story of heroes and villains, and not every movie and TV show is going to be about good guy versus bad guy, Gunn said. Continuing on, he says, quote, There are people that are very questionable about the authority who basically believe that you can't fix the world in an easy manner, and they take things into their own hands. So, um, going to be a very interesting movie, to say the least. Peter Saffron added that, that, quote, They're kind of like Jack Nicholson and a few good men. They know that... You want them on the wall, or at least they believe that, end quote. 
Wow. A Few Good Men pool. What a movie. If you haven't seen A Few Good Men, go check it out. Uh, Gunn said the film is being written now, but he has not said who the screenwriter is for the film. Interesting. Again, I'm glad they're bringing in new things. Now we move to there to new character, and we move to a legacy character, a big character, one of the Trinity, Batman. We were all wondering what the Batman uh, placement in the DCU would be, since we have the Robert Pattinson uh, Batman films going on right now. So, uh, there is a DCU version of Batman coming that will exist separately, of course, from the Batman movies that are part of the, again, DC Elseworlds. Uh, the movie that they're going to be doing and what they're going to be working with while well, Batman is The Brave and the Bold. Uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold will introduce the Bat family, Gunn said. First among them will be Robin, who we have not seen in a live action movie since Batman and Robin. Uh, we try not to talk about that movie too much. That was a rough one. Uh, we haven't really seen Batman on a big live action screen since that movie. Uh, there is a Robin character in the TV show Titans, right? Sorry. Um, but we haven't really seen much of Robin since then. Uh, we did have joseph gordon levitt play a robin in the uh dark knight trilogy um it's always funny to call it that when the first movie batman begins but i digress uh, the version of robin will be damian waynes uh gun described him as quote our favorite robin a little son of a bitch an assassin and a murderer uh of course kid is bruce wayne's biological son a fact unknown to wayne for the first eight to ten years of his life uh, it's very strange sort of father-son story about the two of them, end quote. The project is based on the run of Batman comics authored by Grant Morrison, who Gunn said was, quote, exceptionally influential on the DCU. Uh, the other comics writer Gunn mentioned by name was Tom King, who presented the DCU, who participated, excuse me, in the DCU writer's room and leads right into the next feature project, which will be Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Um, no word of whatsoever. This will be Sasha Cali, who is playing Supergirl in the Flash film this year. But Supergirl World, Woman of Tomorrow. Um, based on King's comic run of the same title from 2021 and 2022, Woman of Tomorrow features Superman's cousin, who, as Gunn explained, is a very different type of Supergirl. Quote, we see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, who was raised on a rock chip off of Krypton and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life. Dude, brutal. Absolutely brutal. That's going to be an insane movie, to say the least. Uh, Gun called this Supergirl, quote, much more hardcore than King's series. Also involves Crypto. Crypto. Crypto the Superdog is going to be in it. Real awesome. There you go. Um, there we go, man. That's interesting. Supergirl has been brought up a lot. You know, of course, it was the Supergirl show that did really well. And then, like I mentioned, Supergirl will be in the Flash film. Um, I don't know. I'm typing right now because I'm trying to make sure I'm not talking out of turn. Uh, yeah, Supergirl will be in the Flash film. This is what I do. Have you ever seen me? I'm not I'm not a perfectionist, dude. Yeah, Sasha Cowley. So I don't know who I don't know if she's playing Supergirl in this movie or not. We'll see. I mean if everything's connected, maybe she is. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna have to wait and see on that one. And then of course the last movie that was announced here was Swamp Thing. Um Cool. Awesome. I know there's a show that didn't work out too well recently with Swamp Thing, but it's good to see the character coming back. Um and this is a way that, you know, Gunn and Saffron are said to want to diversify the DCU. Swamp Thing will investigate the dark origins of Swamp Thing, Saffron said, through the premise of horror. So it's going to be a horror movie. Yes! Love it. Love horror movies. Uh, by the way of explaining further, Gunn referenced the initial reactions to the Guardians of the Galaxy joining the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe and initial questions about how Rocket Raccoon would work standing next to Thor. Gunn had the following to say, quote, that mashup quality would end up being one of the highlights of Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, Gunn argued. Gunn said they're one-upping that approach with Swamp Thing. Quote, this is a much more horrific film, but we'll still have Swamp Thing interact with the other characters, end quote. Give it to me. God, that sounds so awesome, man. God, hope you all are as excited as I am. Hope I'm coming off excited. Very winded. I don't talk this much ever, but <laughs> I'm very into this. So that was the movie stuff, man. That was the movie stuff. We're going to jump into television because they gave us some television stuff as well, uh, starting with Creature Commandos. It's going to be an animated series for HBO Max. That's right. They are making content for HBO Max, but I don't believe everything you're reading on the internet, people. Uh, an animated series for HBO Max is coming and has been greenlit. 
Uh, Creature Commando characters were first launched in 1980. Uh, the premise features Frankenstein's monster teaming up with a werewolf, a vampire, and a Gorgon to fight Nazis in World War II. It doesn't appear that Gunn's version takes quite the same approach. Uh, Weasel, one of the characters from Gunn's 2021 film, The Suicide Squad, is one of the commandos along with Rick Flagg's father, Rick Flagg Sr. Animation, Gunn said, allows their creative collaborators to, quote, tell stories that are gigantic, but without spending, you know, $50 million an episode. Uh, Gunn said that the actors cast to voice the characters on the show will also play the roles in the live action later in the DCU. They are hoping to do that. Um, they're hoping to have any voice actors be the live action actors going into the uh, films. Uh, other show announced, we've already kind of known about this, Waller has officially been announced. Um, Gunn, of course, will be focusing on Superman Legacy for the foreseeable future, and Season 2 of Peacemaker has been put on hold. Oh, wow. I didn't eh, I didn't notice that today. <laughs> okay. Season 2 of Peacemaker has been put on hold. Instead, Team Peacemaker will appear alongside Davis. Uh, Viola Davis, of course, who's playing Waller. As I'm still shocked by Peacemaker Season 2 being put on hold. Uh, Viola Davis has a continuation of that show, Gunn said, which... Um, they give a spoiler here, so we're gonna... Okay, along with, um, uh, Crystal Henry, who was part of the DCU's writer room, Waller will be produced by Jeremy Carver, who created the beloved DC series Doom Patrol, which was recently canceled on HBO Max, which is probably why they're moving to focus on this show. Uh, quote, they are crushing it, Saffron said of Henry and Carver's work on Waller. It's the greatest show ever, Gunn said. It's just the greatest show ever. Both Creature Commandos and Waller are expected to debut before Superman Legacy. Uh, Safford called them. Um, yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, big news here because a lot of people have been asking, where's Green Lantern? When are we getting lanterns? When's Lanterns happening? It is happening. Uh, of all the TV series Safford and Gunn seemed most excited for, it was Lanterns, saying it is a, quote, huge HBO quality event that is very much in the vein of True Detective. Uh, the show will focus on two of the best-known members of the Green Lantern Corps, as Hal Jordan and John Stewart. And they will investigate a mystery that Saffron said, quote, plays a really big role leading into the main story that we're telling across our film and television. So there you go. The show's going to be very important to what's going to be happening throughout the DCU. Quote, so this is a very important show for us. And quote, Saffron continued. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know, I got there before. Uh, the project is separate from the Green Lantern series that was being developed by Greg Belanti for HBO Max which is now no longer moving forward. Of course, you've got this Lantern show instead. Uh, Greg's vision was more of a space opera, Saffron said. Our vision is more true detective-based investigation story. That sounds awesome. Sounds so awesome. All right, moving from there, we go to Paramount, uh, Paramount, Jesus, Paradise Lost, which is uh, described as a, quote, Game of Thrones-ish story by Peter Saffron and is set on an island of Themyscira, before the birth of Diana, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. Awesome. Love this idea. We've seen Themyscira a couple times in the films. We have not seen a full-on, like, uh, paying attention to it. <laughs> so, uh, it's really about political intrigue behind a society of all women, end quote, says Saffron. Added gun, quote, how did they come, how did they come about? What is the origin of an island of all women? What are the beautiful truths and the ugly truths behind all of that? And what's the scheming like between the different power players in that society and quote this show is gonna be freaking awesome i can't wait to see this uh the title the paradise paradise island lost comic series the title recalls paradise lost jeez paradise island lost comic series which was authored by uh phil jiminson and i suck at names george perez which followed a civil war on themiscara however that run directly involved Wonder Woman. This show is not going to involve Wonder Woman right away, it seems, or maybe even at all. Let's see. Up next, we got Booster Gold. And this is the last thing to talk about here. Booster Gold uh, will allow DCU to finally stretch into outright comedy. Uh, while we may not be too familiar to DC characters, you know, again, this is a new character for a lot of people. Uh, it's also known as Mike Carter, is a fan favorite among devoted readers. Saffron called Booster, quote, a loser. From the future who uses basic future technology to come back to today and pretend to be a superhero, end quote. And 25th century Mike is a disgraced former football star who uses a time machine on display in a Metropolis Space Museum. Gunn adds, basically Booster Gold is imposter syndrome as a superhero, end quote. So man, this is, that's it. That's what we got so far and it all sounds super awesome if you ask me. I can't wait to see how everything goes. There was um, also a mention that I didn't have written down here. 
as far as current characters like Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot and Zachary Levi, I mentioned Ezra Miller earlier, uh, they all are open to come back and play uh, the characters, it seems. I think there's maybe a chance we see Jay, uh, Jason Momoa playing someone else. But again, I implore you to wait until they announce these things. Don't fall into the internet's, you know, hey, this is happening or that's happening or this is happening, blah, 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 blah. Wait for this stuff to come out and listen to my show because I'm going to give you uh, this stuff as well. But I'm ah, so excited, man. So excited about all of this that's happening and going down. I love DC. I'm a huge DC fan, especially the movie has been fighting alongside them this whole time. And I'm so amped up about where we're going with all this stuff and how it's all leading into each other and how they're going to have this. But we still have these separate projects out there that aren't being canceled or taken away from us or anything like that. We just got the Batman, the Joker films that we all love. So it's good to see that those are still existing while they were going to have the DCU going down. And it seems like DCU is going to be a big awesome adventure that i'm so stoked and excited for can't wait to see it all happen ah, so happy man it's, again it's like a holiday i got the goosebumps watching the video i've still got goosebumps just talking about all of it right now hope that excitement came out for all of you while i struggle to talk um but yeah man i hope you enjoyed this had a good time and um I talked about some controversial stuff but sometimes you gotta talk it to talk it because there's all kinds of stories out there and you gotta give your viewpoints and feels on things as well but uh, I can't wait to see how things all map out and work out, man. We got the movies coming out this year for DC. We got Shazam again coming up, and then the, which will lead into The Flash, which leads into Blue Beetle, which leads into um, Aquaman, which I'm not saying. <laughs> um, unless, you know, I get some word about something happening in the movie that... Anyways. <laughs> Appreciate you all taking the time to watch me uh, goof off and be you know, awkward as I always am. Hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that like and subscribe, share with all your friends. Um, uh, we appreciate you taking the time as always, uh, with the throw me podcast network. Uh, and can't wait to talk more DC stuff as we get more news. Uh, we'll have that of course on the review at Rob show as more stuff comes out. Appreciate you all taking the time to watch this man. Stay awesome out there. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. See you later.